Hello everyone, this video covers section 5.2, the binomial distribution or the binomial random variable. Recall from the last section that random variable and distribution is pretty much the same thing. In the last section, we talk about random variables in general. So to be a random variable, remember the condition was that all the probabilities have to add to one. In this section, we focus on a very specific distribution, which is called the binomial. Remember that by means two. So here, you can only have two outcomes. The first one will be considered a success. And the second one is a failure. It doesn't mean necessarily that you need to have two choices. You're going to make it two choices. For example, if you roll a die, you actually have six choices, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. But if you focus on number four, if you get a four, it will be a success. And everything else, it will be a, a failure. Now, in this particular distribution, there is a formula. All you have to do is plug it into the formula. And the formula, it is actually pretty easy to, to use. So this is how the formula looks. So every time there is a binomial, you're going to use this formula. So here is how many times you're going to repeat the same, the same trial. Uh, X is going to be the number of successes you want, and P is the probability of success. So these two had to be given, or it should be obvious what it is. And X is pretty much always the question that is being asked. Now, if you try something n times, let's say that n is six then the best thing that can happen is that you are successful six times and the worst thing that can happen is that you fail every single time just like mexico in the world cups okay? so that's why the number of successes it will go from zero to six now let's say that you try also something uh, six times if you are successful Let's say uh, if you are successful two times, that automatically implies that you fail four times. Why? Because you're trying something six times. So just keep that in mind. And the formula takes care of that. So this is how many times you were successful. This is how many times you fail. And this count and how many ways can that, that happen let's do an example and you will see this is straightforward let's say that you're going to ask 10 people if they like chicken or not if they like chicken it's a success if they don't like chicken it's a it's a failure let's say that the success probability is 40 40 percent so if you ask 10 people what's the probability that none of them which means x is equal to zero would like chicken well if you follow the formula this will be 10 choose zero times 0.4 to the zero power times 0.6 to the 10 power remember from the last chapter that this is equals to one from algebra, anything to the zero power is one. And you use a calculator, here you will get 0 0.00604. Uh, so if you round it, this will give you 0 0.0060. So that's the probability that nobody will like chicken. As you can see, all you have to do is plug in the value for x. N and P is not gonna change for this problem. Okay, let's say that the value for x is equal to, to 2. Which, remember, it means what's the probability that if you try something 
10 times, then you'll be successful two times. So we plug into the formula. This is what we get. 10, choose 2, times 0.4 to the second power, times 0.6 to the A power. Again, remember, this is saying if you're going to be successful two times, that means you're going to fail eight times. Why do you have to worry about this? Because you're trying something 10 times. Like, you don't get two successes and you stop. You have to try 10 times. Then, if you use the calculator, this part will be 45. We did that before. This is 0 0.16. And this is 0 0.01679. If you multiply everything, and you run it to four decimal places, you end up with 0 0.1209. If you have a TI 8384, it can actually do the whole thing for you. You still need to know how to set it up like this, because sometimes this is all I want for the answer. But this is how you do in the calculator, and these steps are actually also in the workbook. So you have a TI. 83 or 84 this is what you do go to second then variables and then it will give you a bunch of choices you have one two and so forth make sure you pick letter zero i mean actually it's number zero which will say by nom which is binomial and make sure you pick pdf then you're gonna write 10, which would be P, uh, I mean, sorry, N, and then 0.4, which is the success probability, and then finally the number of successes you want. Make sure you follow the order. Once you click enter, it will give you exactly the answer that we got here. And you can do that for any, any values. All right, let's try one more. Let's say that you want to know what's the probability of getting seven successes. Same thing, it will be P of seven, which will be 10, choose seven, 0.4 to the seven power, and 0.6 to the third power. Now, in case you haven't noticed, even though I already told you, uh, here it is, these two, Obviously, always had to add to, to one. The success and the failure had to add to one. And these two on the top always has to add to, to n, which in this case is 10. So that's a quick way to check that you're doing the right thing. Now, if you do each part separately or you use the calculator, this is around 0 0.0425. And that's it. Let's do another example, this time a word problem. Here it says Ramon buys a box with nine batteries, which means N is going to be equal to nine. The probability that a particular battery is defective is 0 0.03. So here the success probability is 0 0.03. Now, a post, uh, success doesn't have to be a positive thing. Just think about this, they are paying you to find defective batteries. So if you find a defective battery, then it's a success. If you find a good battery, then it's a, it's a failure. So the first question is asking you, what's the probability that none, which means X will be zero, or the battery will be defective? So the question is asking, what's the probability that X is equal to zero? Just, just like the last example, we use the same formula, except that now n is equal to 9, and p is equal to 0 0.03. So we use the formula, this will be now 9, choose 0, times 0 0.03 to the 0 power, times 0 0.97 to the 9 power, which again, this is 1, times 1, times 0 0.8. 76023. So this is around 0.76.
The next question, the calculator cannot do the whole thing at once. And this is related to something I told you in section 4.1. Section 4.1, we talk about the complement. And I told you that it will be very, very useful. So remember that the complement of at least one, this is how you write this mathematically, where it equals to one, was equals to one minus zero. Remember none was the complement at least one. If you don't do this, you had to do this formula 10 times. You had to do it for one, for two, for three, and so forth. And we talked about that before, that that was not idea. That was not a good idea to do that. In our case, since we already have this, this is just one minus 0 0.76, which is equals to 0 0.24. And that's the end of the story. You can see it's very easy, thanks to the complement. Other ones, you will have to use this formula for one, then for two, then for three, then for four, and so forth until you get to nine. Even with a calculator, that can be time consuming. Using the complement is way, way faster. All right, well, what about this last part here? What's the product you're getting? Six successes. So this will be nine, choose six times 0 0.03 to the sixth power times 0 0.97 to the third power. If you use a calculator, you end up with 5.5 AA e to the minus a. Make sure that you understand what this is. Don't just cross it out. Remember that that means 0 0.00000, so 5, 6, 7. And then in position number A, you have the first number, which will be 5, 5, A, A. So you either write this one or leave all of these in there. And that's the answer, which makes sense. If the probability that a battery is effective is only 3%, the probability that you will find 6 out of 9 is very, very, very unlikely, as you can see. So this is very unlikely which makes a lot of sense like we say in section uh, 5.1 every random variable has an expected value and a variance however uh, for the binomial distribution it is actually very 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 simple you don't have to go through the steps from section 5.1 remember in 5.1 you need to have a list like this for a table. In this case, let's say that we use the example where n was 10 and p is 0.4. So you will need to have all of this information, which you don't actually have. We find a few of them, but you will need to find all of this, even with the calculator that will take a while. Then if you wanted to find the expected value, you had to have another column and you want the variance, another one. Again, this will work, but you never want to do this for, for the binomial, because it will take you a long time. Instead, you wanna do the formulas, which only apply to the binomial. The expected value, remember this was the expected value, is just n times p. Yes, it is that easy. So in this particular example, n is equals to 10, p is 4, I mean 0.4, so this equals to 4. That's it. Uh, if you want to do it this way, after like one hour or so, you will end up with, uh, here first of all, 1.0, then this column will give you 4.0. So it will take you a long time. Not only it is easier to find the mean, it is also very easy to find the variance. Just remember that this is only true for the binomial. The variance is equals to mp times 1 minus p. And again, all of these formulas are given on the formula sheet. So in our case, this is equals to 10 times 0.4 times 0.6, which is equals to 2.4. And if you want the standard deviation, well then just take the square root of 2.4. And this will be the standard deviation. 
that's it. So as you can see, this is very, very easy if the distribution is binomial. Unfortunately, most of the time it's not. So, but if it is, you don't have to go through this, which is actually not that bad, but it's time, time consuming. All right. So let's do another example where we have to use this formula. It says, suppose that the passing rate in a particular math class is 55%. How do we know that this is binomial? Well, you either pass or you don't pass. So you only had two choices. You, either, you are either successful or you fail the class. Here it tells you that n is equals to 40. And it's telling you that the success probability is 0 0.55. This is how you know it's asking you to find the expected value. It says, how many did you select? This is not asking for your opinion. It's asking you to find the expected value of x, which is mu. Well, likely, remember this is binomial, so mu is equals to n times p. So in this case, this is 40 times 0.55, which is equals to 22. So that means that you expect 22 students to pass. That's it. Now notice how you don't have to use the binomial formula because it's not asking you to find any probability. It's just asking you to find the expected value. But just to check that you understood the formula so far for finding probabilities, if I ask you this, that means what's the probability that 25 out of 40 will will pass then the formula tells you to do this 55 so you want 25 successes that means that you fail 15 times and then just use a calculator or sometimes you can just leave the answer like like this okay. all right so finally Let's say that you roll a die 600 times. Okay. So how many fours are expected to come out? Expected to come out. All right, here, notice that this is a uh, binomial. If you get a four, it will be considered a success. And if you don't get a four, it will be a failure. Like if you get a one, a two, a three, a five, and a six. So the question is asking you how many are expected. So it's asking you again to find mu. Well, mu is equals to n times p. Here, n is 600. Why? Because you're repeating the same event 600 times. So it will be 600. Remember, the success probability is 1 6. Why? Because there is 1 6 chance of getting a 4, which is equal to 100. So, therefore, if you roll a die 600 times, you will expect to get 100 fours. Does that mean you're going to get 100 fours? No. Remember, there is one crucial thing that is very important missing the standard deviation. So if you find the standard deviation, remember once you find the standard deviation, 95% of all the data, according to the empirical rule, is to be within two standard deviations. Remember, within two standard deviations means the mean plus two standard deviations, or the mean minus two standard deviations. So this will tell you what should be happening 95% of the time. All right, so that's it for section 5.2.